electric current. The rate of flow of electric charge through a given area of a conductor or any other closed circuit is defined as electric current. Electric current is given as I is equal to Q divided by T. The direction of the flow of positive charge gives the direction of electric current. Since electron is a negatively charged particle, therefore the direction of electric current through the metallic conductors on account of the flow of free electrons is opposite to the direction of flow of electrons. Electric currents in a conductor. For a current to flow in a conductor, a potential difference must exist across it. The current flows from high potential to low potential through the conductor. When a battery is connected across the ends of the conductor, the surface charges of opposite sign build upon the conductor, starting from the two ends in contact with the battery terminal. These surface charges produce an electric field E. This electric field causes the electrons to move in a direction opposite to that of the field. Due to collisions, the electrons slowly move along the conductor. This directed flow of electrons constitute the current. Ohm's law. Here a battery of 12 volts is connected to a bulb which is acting as conductor. As the circuit is complete, the bulb starts glowing. It implies some current I is flowing through the bulb. This is Ohm's law where V is proportional to I. Resistance Let us consider a conductor of length L and area of cross section A. Resistance R of the conductor is directly proportional to the length L of the conductor and inversely proportional to the area of cross section A of the conductor. Now, if 12 volt be the potential difference applied across the conductor, a current of 6 ampere flows through the conductor. Then resistance R is 12 by 6, that is 2 ohms. To study the dependence of resistance R of length L, let us take two conductors of same material, length L and area of cross section A. Align both the conductors one after the other. The total length of the conductor becomes 2L. Now connect the voltmeter across the first conductor. The potential difference is found to be 12 volts. Similarly, on connecting across the second conductor, the potential difference is again found to be 12 volts. But the current passing through the combination is 6 amperes. Thus, the total potential difference across the combination is 24 volts. Finally, the resistance of the combination of two conductors is 24 volts by 6 amperes, that is 4 ohms. Thus, on doubling the length of the conductor doubles the resistance. To study the dependence of resistance R of area of cross section A, let us take a conductor of length L and area of cross section A. The conductor is cut lengthwise so that area of cross section becomes half. Now connect the emitter across the first conductor. The current is found to be 3 amperes. Similarly, on connecting across the second conductor, the current is again found to be 3 amperes. But the total current passing through the combination is 6 amperes. The potential difference across each conductor is 12 volts. Finally, the resistance of the single conductor is 12 volts by 3 amperes, that is 4 ohms. And the total resistance of the combination is 8 ohms. Thus, halving the area of cross section increases the resistance of a single conductor by 2 times. Graphical representation of Ohm's law. When the potential difference of 0 volt is applied, the emitter in the circuit, emitter reads 0 amperes. When it is increased to 5 volts, the emitter reads 1 amperes, and so on. Which is in accordance with the Ohm's law, which states that the current flowing through the circuit is directly proportional to the potential difference applied when the resistance is kept constant.
Limitations of Ohm's law. First, V non-linearly depends on I. Second, the relationship between V and I depends on the sign of V for the same absolute value of V. Third, the relation between V and I is non-unique. It implies that for the same value of the current I, there is more than one value of voltage V.